welcome back to the Golden Rule Radio. I'm going to start this week's show off myself, guys, uh, and talk about gold because gold in the last couple of weeks has had a few bearish candles on the daily chart and is pulling back off the 1325 number that Miles was talking about last week. And we're seeing this pullback. We're down about $20 from the, the recent peak of 1325. We're about 1305 today, Wednesday afternoon, we're recording. I wouldn't be surprised by the time you hear this show Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon or later this weekend, that we actually do see gold pulling back into the 1200s, the, the high 1200s. I'd love to see that. We've had a good run from here. We went up to a technical level at 1325. It would be healthy for gold to pull back into the 1200s. And I think we're going to see it. Beyond that, gold's going to have another good run and it's going to take out that previous high of 1375 going into the 1400s. This pullback into the 1200s, if you are sitting on the fence, you need to be taking action as we see the prices soften in here. This is your chance. I'm going to tell you this is your chance. Yeah, Robert, I'm glad you brought that up because we did point out the likelihood of having that pullback at 1325 here a week or two ago. So to see it come back, kind of draw that uh, bowstring back, so to speak, because really I don't see anything in the chart stopping us between 1325 and that old long-term multi-year compressing pennant uh, up around 1365 to 1375. So to be able to come back into that price again here this spring, uh, I think that there are not just some technical, but also some fundamental reasons. You know, we talked about the uh, waffling back and forth as far as interest rates and uh, spending coming out of the Fed Reserve. Uh, Tori talked about that last week. With some of the uncertainty right now, both domestically and abroad, especially abroad, uh, when we look to some of our southern neighbors and what's going on with inflation down in, say, Venezuela, uh, I think that we could see a pretty good run into metals globally, and the American public's going to catch on to that eventually. I agree. And just because I say we may come back down into the 1200s doesn't mean that we will. I mean, I won't be surprised wherever gold takes a, a turn back up. But this is the softening that we've been hoping for and waiting for. Um, you just may not see it very deep. Um, I think at max you're probably looking at 1250, but it may be so quick that you're not able to take advantage of it. But this is a crucial moment with all the markets, the currency markets, the major currencies with gold. Um, the markets are trying to determine where they're going to go. And gold is going to go higher. It's a matter of do we come back a little bit more before we do that, but it's going higher. Well, we'll get into the dollar too, but speculators often see that, right guys? I mean, you're, you're calling for price movement. I think a lot of times psychologically, we see it in the equities markets. We don't really buy a rally if it hasn't had a healthy correction first. And so a healthy correction, Robert, I, you won't be surprised. If that's what it takes for us to bounce back up, I'm all for it. I'm excited for that breakout above that 1370, 75 range. And, and then we will be into a whole new channel. I do believe it's coming in 2019. Uh, what comes first? You know, you guys over there should do a little side lunch bet. The last thing I'll mention on gold before we jump to silver, uh, as Miles pointed out last week, the chart of gold is, is showing some divergence. And so there's a number of indicators making us think that we are going to see a temporary pullback here. But again, it doesn't have to do that. It, the, the bullish sentiment, the ripeness that's out there in the market for gold, it could just keep running from us. Yeah, it's 1325 down to 1305 enough. Not a big deal. Yeah, well, 1300 hold. Again, not right. a big deal. And a lot of it's going to be based on the dollar action, which I know, glad to have Robert back, King Dollar. He'll get into that in a bit. So switching over to silver and, of course, platinum, both kind of straddling their lower end of the trading range. Uh, platinum continues to inch up. You know, silver did take a 50, 60 cent drop, but not too bad because it's still sitting above some of its uh, lower support levels. So obviously, as gold is finding a little bit of a ceiling here, uh, and having that uh, consolidation of price looking for uh, a little running room as it sets up for its next move up, silver and platinum are going to follow suit. So as always, they tend to lag a little bit behind in the early stages of any market run, uh, but when they move, they move far more aggressively. And like we've been saying for quite a while now, if you're not in a silver and platinum position uh, alongside your gold, um, I, I don't know what you're waiting for. Not a whole lot to add in terms of the ratios this week either. I mean, silver 
had been inching up closer to gold, narrowing that ratio gap, but it's back up over 83 to 1, nearing 84 to 1. So lending credence to your statement, white metals are where it's at right now if you're in for future ratio trading. And I want to pivot here for just a sec into the fundamentals off of the technicals. I'm not just talking about ratio trading and premium swapping. Those are fundamentals in the precious metals markets that ought to motivate you right now when you're seeking value. I'm talking about even grander fundamentals. Like let's take Venezuela, for example. Here we have a modern day example of a failed attempt to inflate a currency where it gets out of control and it turns into hyperinflation. It's a failed attempt at socialism slash communism, right? And so what we're seeing here, and, and, and we've updated you periodically throughout the, the last 15 months or so on Venezuela, but do you understand what an ounce of gold is doing in Venezuela? Okay, and I'm not saying this out of greed. I'm saying this out of protection of purchasing power. Asset preservation is always best in the form of gold, physical gold. So when you see the Venezuelan Bolivar trading in gold to the tune of 326 million bolivar per ounce. All right. Tell me what that does in terms of your purchasing power. What is that trading into in a period of desperation, whether it be a tube of toothpaste or a house? Go do the math and see where that was even five years ago. Well, and I don't know how many times we need to repeat this catastrophe over the last hundred years for people to finally wake up. And you, do, you don't have to go 40 years Soviet Union ago. I mean, uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah, you don't have to go Weimar Republic. I mean, I visited Zimbabwe with a roommate of mine who was from Africa when I was in college about 15 years ago. So when I got off the plane in Zimbabwe, the bank exchange rate was 50 Zim dollars to one US dollar. And two months later at that same bank, the exchange rate was still 50 Zim dollars to one US dollar. However, if you didn't exchange at the bank, since I was with a local visiting and he could go to various stores or shops or other entities where you could exchange money on the streets, when we got off the plane, the actual exchange rate was about 350 to one. And two months later, when I jumped on the plane to head home, the exchange rate in just a couple months had gone up fivefold. So the banks were still pocketing that difference, knowing that that type of hyperinflation was on the way. Now, as anybody followed that story over the next couple of years, that went to millions, billions, and eventually trillions per exchange rate. So how people can continue to look at socialist government systems and massive hyper inflation over time and not realize the deterioration of value of your labor and the deterioration of the value and the pay that you receive in exchange savings. for your labor or your savings or anything else is just, it baffles the mind. So personally, uh, not to get too political here, but I'd love to package up a few people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, ship her down and see if she can run her platform in a place like Venezuela and see what the mob down there responds to it. Well, what frustrates me sometimes is talking with people in the United States who, for whatever reason, maybe it's conditioning that, that the media has done to them, um, they don't understand this thing that other people in other countries understand with this loss of, of value of your currency. It's just like a concept that a lot of Americans just don't grasp. I just, I don't understand why, but... Well, well especially as Americans, I mean, I can understand why because... They really, unless you were in the South in the Civil War, you really haven't experienced it within our own borders. Right. It doesn't make us immune, right? Every currency, every fiat currency in the world has always become worthless over time. And so it is a matter of time, whether that's a, a reset or a joining of, of currencies, much like what you've seen in the Eurozone, any number of ways it can play out. I think Americans are going to be forced to understand it. Well, even if it's just 5% a year. You still have to explain it. It doesn't have to be 5,000%. We bring up the modern day example as an extreme because of where it could go. Don't let yourself be numb to the fact that you're losing 5% every year to inflation. Your $100,000 savings in the bank account is now worth 95000 a year later. What does that do over the course of 10 years? 10 years alone. So careful what you're saving in. And that's just one fundamental. I want to touch briefly on two others. One, the global economic slowdown, pay attention right now, right? It's coming the opposite direction across the pond. This is Asia, this is Europe, 
and it's going to infect the United States, regardless of a trade deal that's added a lot of juice into the U.S. equities markets here. You know, we're up a full 2% in, in a matter of three trading days. That's great. If they reach an agreement, you're going to see a lot more Chinese money pumping into our system. But you want another modern day example of a hyperinflationary economy, it could absolutely be China in the next five years. Tori, I think the last fundamental we need to touch on is debt, uh, both globally and certainly here domestically, $22 trillion. Um, even Venezuela owes billions and hundreds of billions of dollars overseas. You know, and you, real quick before we look at the U.S. debt, I love that you brought up the Eurozone concept. Um, because you think about what Germany was willing to trade, you know, their German uh, position in the euro and the authority that they've now wielded over Europe in exchange for some of the other countries who have faced some economic hardships. And I think we might see something similar with the Venezuela situation because Russia and China, who are owed hundreds of billions of dollars to Venezuela, is certainly in communication right now. So what are you willing to trade of your own sovereignty in exchange for paying your debt off? Well, it's yeah, personal debt, it's national debt, it's global debt, like you're saying, it's debt to GDP. These are all things that we have to check. And you know, the $22 trillion, again, talking about getting numb to numbers, $22 trillion. It was half of that, you guys, a decade ago. Ten years ago, it was half of that. Now, President Barack Obama's administration racked up as much debt in eight years as in the previous 232-year history of our country, right? And so he entered with $10.6 trillion in total debt and left at 19.9, essentially 20 trillion. So that's 1.16 trillion a year. All right, and everybody blames Bush for wars and the spending and all that. But you know, under President Donald Trump, the debt has still climbed. It has slowed down a little bit to 991 billion a year. He's exceeded two trillion now in the first couple of years. So this is, again, it's already become insurmountable, but you know, everybody's gonna say, well, what is it to GDP? As long as GDP is outpacing the debt, which it's not. You know, during that same period of time, we have seen debt increase, or the debt to GDP ratio increase from about 85 to up to 105. So you're getting into some real dangerous territory here. And on top of that, global debt is over $250 trillion. Now, this, this is from a cash accounting standpoint. If you go accrual accounting and you're looking at what is an unfunded liability, you know, like pensions and what have you, and derivatives, we now are exceeding two quadrillion dollars in monies that we have promised out there. So try to just wrap your mind around that and tell me that we don't get a reset. You're going to start hearing bankruptcies. You're going to start hearing restructurings. Every time that happens, that is a default. There will be defaults on debt ramping up. And something that touches really, really deeply on this is, is the February McIlvaney Intelligence Advisor. And we're going to give you a free February newsletter. It's a $13 value. Just call us, let us know that you want it. Uh, we'll mail it to you. We'll mail you a physical copy. We'll email you one. But it really is timely information on this whole debt discussion and gold. Uh, so just call us at 1-800-525-9556 and we will get one of those out to you. So before we wrap, I wanted to make a comment about the, the debt fundamental you guys talked about and what a lot of people and maybe some of our listeners own inside their investment portfolio are annuities. Um, you can have an annuity outside of an IRA or inside of an IRA. And often when I come across people with annuities, you know, they talk about the guaranteed income. Um, say it's three, four, five percent guaranteed. Well, it's only guaranteed as much as that annuity company is solvent. And so we we subscribe to a rating service where we look at the details of the annuities. So I've done this in the last few days uh, and I've looked at the actual rating of, of a few of these annuities. The rating might be, let's say a C plus or a B minus or a B. And you know, if you got a B in school, you made the honor roll, right? Mom and dad were kind of happy. When I look up, at the actual makeup of the of the annuity and, and what it holds in the investment portfolio, uh, it does a, a rating on a scale of zero to 10. A lot of times these ratings will say like 3.2 on a scale of zero to 10. Well, if I brought home a 32 on a paper or a test, my parents weren't too happy. I didn't pass the grade. And so when it says it's a B minus on the rating scale, but then when you look at the details of what these annuities are backed by, 
It's 80% bonds, which is debt. It's 80% debt. And if you look at the quality, it's a three or a four or a five on a scale of zero to 10. That's not a passing grade. And you had the one of the largest insurance companies, AIG, that went bankrupt in the last crisis. And the only reason that it's still in existence today is because it got bailed out. Is the government going to be the backstop on this next ca- catastrophe that's coming because of the debt? I don't know that we are. And if we do, if the government does back it up, then what does it do the dollar? I mean, it's like inflate or default, inflate or default. That Those are the options. Inflate that's the big Inflate or picture. die. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like skate or die, is that the reference? <laughs> yeah, that, you know, it's, it's inflate or default. And I think Richard Russell uh, of the Dow Theory Letters a long time ago used to talk a lot about that inflate or die. And, and that's where we really are. That, that is the big picture. So anyway, thanks for listening. Well, and the last uh, derivatives collapse we had was pretty much central to a specific market, but it was a case study. You know, it was a it was a fractal of the bigger picture. And when we have something like that come around, I mean, when when the world finally comes to terms with the fact that everybody owes everybody everything, and nobody has anything, and what happens when that picture finally gets painted? Not just not just in equities, not just in bonds, not just in real estate, not just in government debt, not just in sovereign nation debt to each other. When we all realize that nobody has ev- anything and everybody owes everybody everything, like what? how does that play out? That's where you get the reset. And that's why you own gold, because no matter what happens in a currency reset, your ounce will automatically adjust accordingly and your asset preservation, your purchasing power will have been maintained. And, and a really important place to do that is in your IRA. So, Robert, you brought it up. Yep. Look, you know, the IRS has given us a gift. You can contribute an additional $500 a year to your to your traditional or Roth IRA this year. Give us a shout. We can help you get one open. It can hold physical metals. And we're going to be really happy to kind of walk you through the process. Well, you're all also in the window of time right here in the beginning of the year that you can contribute for last year mm-hmm. and this year. So good time in the metals market to be adding to positions or, or acquiring new ones. And you're able to do the double contribution for both years. Um, you also, if you have an annuity, you should call us and get the rating and we'll look it up and tell you what the rating is. So that's it for this week. Thanks for listening. You can call us at 800-525-9556. You can also swing by our website, mcelvaney.com. Twitter at ICA Gold. Subscribe here to our YouTube channel. Uh, ring the bell for notifications. Head on over to Facebook, McElvaney Financial. As always, thanks for listening and have a great week. Mm-hmm.